In this video, I want to talk about mononeuropathy. Mononeuropathy. And also the separate but related concept of radiculopathy. Radiculopathy. Now these are both peripheral neurological disorders. That is a problem in the peripheral part of the nervous system. And even more specifically, these are both focal abnormalities of the peripheral nervous system with an abnormality in one discrete spot. But mononeuropathy is dysfunction of one nerve. One nerve. Somewhere out in the periphery of the body. While well, we use this term radiculopathy for dysfunction of one spinal nerve or its roots. One spinal nerve or its roots. So if we kind of look at some nerves that are derived from spinal nerves, the nerves coming out of the spinal cord, for example if we take one that's going down into the hand here, so for example if we looked at one nerve way out here in the periphery, like let's think about this part of the nerve way down here by the wrist, if we had a lesion, some kind of abnormality of that peripheral nerve way out here in the periphery, we would call that a mononeuropathy. If instead we were looking at a spinal nerve, just as this very initial segment of nerve that's connected to the spinal cord, and if there was a problem here of this spinal nerve, a lesion right there where the spinal nerve is connecting to the spinal cord or very close to it, we would call that a radiculopathy. With both mononeuropathy and radiculopathy, we can see similar types of abnormalities related to the types of axons that are traveling in the nerves. So we may see somatosensory abnormalities, somatosensory. We may see lower motor neuron abnormalities, lower motor neuron. And theoretically we could see autonomic abnormalities, autonomic abnormalities because the axons running in nerves of the peripheral nervous system are those of somatosensory neurons, lower motor neurons, and autonomic neurons. However, I'm going to put autonomic in parentheses here because we usually don't see much for autonomic abnormalities with the common mononeuropathies and the common radiculopathies. Probably because there's some overlap from other nerves and other levels of spinal nerves so that these abnormalities are usually not there or they're very subtle compared to somatosensory abnormalities and lower motor neuron abnormalities. Now in particular for somatosensory abnormalities, pain is a very common somatosensory abnormality for both mononeuropathy and radiculopathy, but often in a little bit of a different pattern. Now the most common mononeuropathies and radiculopathies usually affect the limbs. So usually there'll be one arm or one leg where we're seeing the symptoms and signs, the abnormalities related to this. You can see other nerves involved that aren't going to the limbs or other levels of spinal nerve roots. However, they just tend to be much less common than the ones that cause symptoms in, in one arm or one leg. Certain parts of certain nerves are most often affected, and this is usually by the mechanical pathology of compression by surrounding structures, such as parts of the wrist here or parts of the spine here. Although some of the nerves are more commonly affected by compression from external objects, such as a nerve behind the elbow that we often call the funny bone. Now I just want to go through a few examples of common mononeuropathies and common radiculopathy to give you a feel for what these look like. So let me just briefly mention two of our most common mononeuropathies, and the most common by far, and really one of the most common neurological disorders overall, is called median neuropathy. Median neuropathy. I'll just write median. And this usually involves gradual compression of the median nerve in the wrist. So a nerve that's passing through the wrist here, and it's passing through a structure called the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel. And so it's commonly known as the carpal tunnel syndrome when this nerve is getting compressed in the carpal tunnel of the wrist. The carpal tunnel is kind of a tight canal that this nerve has got to go through, and there are changes that can happen to the bones and the soft tissues there that make up the carpal tunnel that can compress the nerve and cause it to have abnormal function. 
And so the symptoms people usually develop are related to the functions of this nerve. And what it does is it carries a bunch of somatosensory axons for parts of the hand, the one hand on that side, so that there'll be often a lot of somat somatosensory symptoms for parts of the hand on one side, which often include pain, as well as numbness or tingling. And they may also develop lower motor neuron abnormalities to some of the muscles in the hand, particularly these ones at the base of the thumb here. So there may be weakness or wasting of some of these muscles in that one hand. Now, in addition to these nerves to the limbs, which are most commonly affected with mononeuropathy syndromes, we can also see cranial nerves affected to the head or the neck. And the most common of these is the facial nerve. So facial neuropathy, I'll just write facial, can occur where a nerve that's coming out of the brain stem and it's going to control all the muscles of facial expression, the muscles that move the face around on one side. So with this function of the facial nerve, with facial neuropathy on one side, what we can see is weakness of the muscles of the face on that one side. Now the facial nerve actually has some other functions, so there are some other kind of subtle abnormalities that can occur, but the main thing most people usually notice is the weakness of the muscles on one side of the face. Now the most common cause of facial neuropathy on one side is actually unknown. This is actually an idiopathic disorder that's called Bell's palsy. I'll just write that out. Bell's palsy. And that was a person's name. And this is a pretty common disorder, so a lot of people will develop this weakness of the muscles on one side. And what we see is there, the nerve, the facial nerve, appears to become inflamed. There's inflammation happening there. And it's probably that there's, there are some different viruses that actually get into the nerve and cause inflammation of the nerve. But we're not totally sure in most cases what causes it. Those are a couple of the common mononeuropathies, and there are a number of others that are pretty common as well. But I just want to mention kind of our most common radiculopathy, or problem with one spinal nerve or its roots. And that's one way down coming out of the spinal cord, very low, that sends axons all the way down the leg and all the way down into the foot. And we look at it from, from the back, we'd see a similar pattern. And that particular level of spinal nerves is called L5 for short, for the fifth lumbar level. And don't worry about the details of that now, we can get into that later. But with a lesion of the L5 spinal nerve roots with some kind of pathology or disorder affecting all those axons passing through there, we can see somatosensory abnormalities. And in particular, we often see a lot of pain. And the pain of radiculopathy often does this thing where it rapidly spreads down the limb that's affected. A lot of patients will say there's a pain that kind of shoots down the leg or the arm. And when it shoots down the leg in particular, that's often referred to as sciatica. Sciatica. Which is related to the name of a, a group of nerves here in the pelvis. And so that shooting pain is common with radiculopathy and, and fairly distinctive for radiculopathy. But then we can also see loss of some of these functions. So for example, for somatosensation, there's a strip of skin kind of along the outside of the upper leg and the lower leg, and then it swings over to the top and the inside of the foot. And that strip of skin that's innervated by that spinal nerve, we call a dermatome. Each spinal nerve has a, a strip of skin that it provides the somatosensory axons for. So the lesions, we see that particular pattern of somatosensory loss, or we can. And then there's also lower motor neuron axons passing through this spinal nerve. And so we can see some of the muscles of the leg can be affected, and we can see weakness in some of the muscles of the leg. And we could also see wasting or some of the other lower motor neuron signs in addition to weakness. And the group of muscles that are supplied with uh, lower motor neuron axons by each spinal nerve level is called a myotome. Let me just write those words out. So a dermatome, dermatome is the area of skin that receives somatosensory axons from one level of a spinal nerve or its roots, whereas a myotome are all the skeletal muscles, myotome, that receive their lower motor neuron axons, their innervation from that level of, of spinal nerves. So that with radiculopathy, when one spinal nerve or its roots are affected, we can see somatosensory abnormalities in its dermatome and or lower motor neuron abnormalities in its myotome. 
And really, the concept is the same for mononeuropathy, where each nerve has its territory that it supplies somatosensory axons to and lower motor neuron axons to. We don't use these terms dermatome and myotome for the territories of these nerves out in the periphery. We only use these terms for the territories supplied by the spinal nerves, but the concept is the same. So that basically when somebody develops neurological symptoms, one of the things we're looking for with their symptoms and their signs is we're trying to see if the distribution of the abnormalities fits into the territory of a single nerve or a spinal nerve, because that would point us to uh, a mononeuropathy or a radiculopathy. And then that usually tells us a lot about the cause, because with both mononeuropathy and radiculopathy as well, usually it's a mechanical pathology of compression. And with radiculopathy, it's usually surrounding structures of the spine. So the spine is around the spinal cord. And all these spinal nerves have to pass through the spine. And there are a number of degenerative changes that can happen to the spine through life where parts of the spine kind of deteriorate and degenerate and they can compress spinal nerves. And that deterioration of the spine we call spondylosis. Spondylosis. And that's just deterioration of tissues of the spine that develops during life. And that's the most common cause of radiculopathy, of one of these spinal nerves getting compressed. And there are a lot of different things that can contribute to spondylosis, including just normal aging and deterioration with age, as well as injury. Injury to the spine can contribute to degenerative changes and compression of spinal nerves. So more on all these later, but I just wanted to introduce these concepts and mention a couple of the common mononeuropathies and radiculopathies.